Oh, oh, sorry. Was on purpose. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending to my talk. Uh, yesterday, I talked about PHP internals. Today, I'm going to talk about PHP, strict programming PHP. It's a more, a more it's actually a relaxed talk. We are going to just chill out. So, I'm Gabriel Caruso. I'm from Brazil. I work for a company called Le Roi Merlin uh, in Brazil. Uh, I'm a PHP internals and externals evangelist. I like to work with the core PHP. Uh, I'm a member of a famous community in Brazil called PHPSP, PHP São Paulo. Uh, I believe before, after PHP Barcelona, we are one of, the, one of the greatest and biggest community in PHP. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, GitHub, at Caruso Gabriel. Okay. So here's the agenda. We are going to talk about some what does strict programming in strict programming language means? Because, well, there's a little bit of difference on that. We're going to talk about the benefits of using strict programming language. We're going to see what's the benefits of using a weak programming language and a strict programming language. We are going to talk about code instruction in PHP. This is the most fun and most important part of the talk. We're going to talk about how to ensure that my project is a strict programming, is strictly safe. Because, for example, I code strict, but my open source project will receive some, some pull requests that aren't safe. So how do we share that? And as well, we are going to talk about uh, the, strict the strict change coming to PHP score. Uh, because we have some, well, will it be features strict coming to PHP score? So, do we have the box? Yes. Uh, does someone can explain to me what the strict programming means? Can someone explain that to me? No, I will need to do that. Okay, I can. Do. Uh, <laughs> so, strict programming and strict programming language are two different things. Uh, because, like, strict programming, yes, strict programming. It isn't the same thing of strict programming language because strict programming is a paradigm. You can code strict in PHP, for example. So, PHP, but PHP, it isn't a strict programming. But for, but for example, Java, C, Kotlin, actually Kotlin, no. So, Java is C. You must code strict because you need to declare types, for example. You need, in Kotlin, for example, the, the example I gave, uh, you need to open your class, not declare it final. So it's the opposite. So it's a strict. So strict programming is in a way a paradigm in how we can treat our code. And strict programming language is a language that is built on top of that paradigm. So are the two different things. Uh, the benefits of using a strict programming language, it isn't just about types. Yes, types is one of the reasons, but it isn't just that. Uh, for example, in PHP, we have built-in scalar types, but built-in scalar types in PHP are optional. So that's what makes strict programming in PHP optional. We have more strongly typed code. For example, in C, you don't have to judge or cast the types during comparisons, for example, in Java as well. Uh, we have the closed API codes, as I said in Kotlin, for example. You have to open your class instead of declaring that it's final. So it's the opposite. Uh, you have less time, runtime exceptions, because for example, in PHP, you have a lot of runtime exceptions due to this type code or that strict code. And last but not least, when you code strict, you probably know the flow of your code. It won't be like catch a surprise. So here, have something strange. Well, in PHP, it happens a lot, but well. So, strict programming PHP. When you code strict in PHP, uh, actually, there are some stuff that happens during the code that, well, for example, the echo operator, the little monster in PHP. What is the result of comparing string to zero in PHP? Who believes it's true? Who believes it's false? It's true. Yes. <laughs> uh, an empty array is new in PHP. 
Yes, because an array is null. Well, mm, a empty array that the type of array is equal to null. Oh, strange. Uh, an empty string is false in PHP. Yes, it is. Oh my God. This one, this one is actually interesting. One is equal to one, but well, we are actually typing that one followed by one zero and one followed by three zeros. Well, they aren't the same thing. Well, for PHP in almost all languages, this is true because they, 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 they don't consider the, left, the zero on the left. Actually, this is a problem I faced on my company a couple of months ago. Uh, as I said, I work for Le Roi Mejola. We are e-commerce. And e-commerce usually have sale orders. And sale orders are prefixed by, for example, in our company, five zeros. But if it, we discovered that some of our integrations were sending uh, sale orders with three zeros. OK, let's write a, a, a test for that. Well, as I said, you can compare zeros in the left side. So in this, only this case, yes, we can convert to, a, a, to use the identical operator. But you need to convert to a string, because in PHP, in almost all languages, you can do that. So to avoid all these, well, URID comparisons in PHP, you can use the identical operator. The identical operator, well, if they ha don't, don't have the same type, the two variables on the left and the right, they already return false. So you avoid some false positives. OK? Uh, well, we have the identical operator in PHP. But I believe we, we need more operators like identical. And I decided to propose that to PHP 7.4. Actually, I'm going to open the pull request in the RFC in the next month. Uh, so we have the identical operator. OK, that's fine. But I don't have four equals. So instead of just being identical, they live in the same memory slot. That makes sense, because if you declare, for example, A equals B equals 1, they are living the same memory slot. But if you declare five, well, they are actually living the same neighborhood. They live with each other. So they are more than identical. They live in the same neighborhood. If you declare six, they are brothers. Well, so that's perfect. So more than identical, they are brothers. If you declare seven, they are twin brothers. So that's awesome. But if we need really to ensure that two variables are the same, we need to use physicists. We need to use eight. Why? Albert Einstein, or some physicist said once, if two things live in the same space-time, in the same space, in the same time, there are no two things. There is actually one thing. So well, this is how we're going to propose that for PHP. Actually, it's a joke. So, uh, Using the empty function is actually something PHP that, well, there is some actually strange, strange behavior. For example, zero in PHP is empty, but an empty string, a, a string with zero is considered as empty. So like, what the hell? And false is also empty. But like, false isn't empty or not empty. It's true or false. What the hell? So instead of using empty, please use PHP. For example, I work for a doctrine. And I usually work in the doctrine code stand stuff. We forbidden the empty array because of that. I believe PHP stands for tools also does that because, well, empty sucks. Uh, here's the latest wrong. Who believes this statement is going to return true? No, empty array is true. OK, so I propose that all of you believe this is going to return false. Yes. Why this statement returns false? Because the is no, pay attention to that, the is no function checks for the type no. It took me some time to, to realize that. So the is no only checks for the no type. It didn't check for nullable, empty, other stuff, just for the no type. For example, an, empty, an array with no's is, we can call that a nullable array, for example. It isn't null, and it isn't empty. But an empty array is empty, but it isn't null. Oh my god, what's going on? 
So here's a, a summarize of only use is null on checks for the null type. But well, as well, I don't like is null, so I'd prefer to use the null constant. As well, in doctrine, you're forbidden the is null function because well, it's better to use null so you can like expose, um, you can explicitly over implicitly. It's better. Okay, here's another instance from switch. Who believes is the first echo, the first assignment is going to be done? Okay, some of you. Who believes is the second one? So, the rest of you. Well, PHP switch construct is loosely compared. So, it basically is going to judge all the comparisons. We're using the echo operator under the hood. So, yes, foo is one, but foo is equal, not identical to true. So, this is what gets changing. It gets attributed to the ver variable. So, pay attention to that. Make sure that all your, all your cases in your switch match the same type of the variable, okay? Well, this one. It's, it's going to echo out hi or hello? Hi or hello? Hi, nice to meet you. Yes. Because last one for PHP is true. Don't ask me why, but it is. Uh, so, what do we, how do we do, so how do we, oh uh, no, get around, oh my god, this light got stuck. So it's missing uh, calibrations and other stuff. Fuck. And uh, so, well, just pass booleans. So a result of a comparison, a result of a lot of stuff is boolean. So just pass that to, to if because, well, it's safer. OK? So we are talking about strict programming. And well, PHP 7 receives a lot of strict because it receives the scalar types. And aren't the scalar types on the way to the strict programming in PHP? Yes, it is. Well, almost. Let's start. Again, no calibration. Oh my god. So function, I have a function called convert to string that receives an integer. Pay attention to that. Returns a string. And well, we are just returning this integer. And we are calling this function passing a float. And if you pay attention to this, for example, we don't have the declare strict types equals 1 here. And well, if you do, don't declare the dec declare strict types in PHP 7 and beyond, <sighs> PHP is going to do some magic. It will convert all that stuff. So for example, floats can be cast to a string to an integer. Integer can be cast to a string. So you are passing a float to a function that receives integer, and that integer being converted to a string. Oh my god. So please, work, OK? So please, declare your strict types, your scalar types. Uh, so here, we are, as we are passing float, oh, sucks. There is actually an error message here. Oh, in my computer is showing, in the slides aren't. Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, normal. So, some live coding. Okay. So. Can you in the back see? So, we have a declare. Strict times equals one. We have a function, uh, foo, that returns a string, but receives an integer. So bar and returns bar here. If we call var dump in that function foo passing a float, please God works. Yes, it works. So we get a error type that actually comes from the strict programming paradigm that we are trying to pass the first argument for foo must be an integer and we are passing a float. And if we pass a float, uh, integer, sorry, for this, fu for this function, 
again, PHP is going to try to cast, but as we declared strict types, we can do that. Because we are returning a string, and my parameter is an integer. So please, declare strict types in your code. It will really help, help you. But pay attention to one. OK, it's here. Woohoo, what happened? Live code sucks. Here. OK. But pay attention to one thing. Uh, actually, I did that on a framework recently, and well, I got really surprised. I'm not going to expose the name of the framework. Uh, the framework do, do not, does not ha use strict types. So I, I okay, okay, let's add that because no, no, none of the functions were using uh, the the parameters, the scalar types in return in parameters. So I, I, I put the declare strict types. All the functions start to blow. Why? Because this behavior will also change the internal functions. So for example, if you are passing to str pos a null or an integer, in some case, well, it will fail because it receives a string. So pay attention to that. Uh, so here's a more for the reference when you download the slides. Uh, I get that from the RFC of scalar types. Uh, there are some castings in PHP that aren't possible Pay attention to this last column. There are, for example, in objects. Objects in PHP cannot be converted to almost all types except for a string. Except if that object implements true, the true string method. Okay, so pay attention to that because it can get strict. Okay, so we are talking about strict programming. Okay, I learned strict programming here today and I'm going to apply that to my project, but my project is open source. And well, open source project usually is pull requests. I hope so. And sometimes that pull request comes with an eco operator, for example. How do you ensure that? You can use stack analysis. Uh, in this example, I'm using PHP 10, but PHP 10 has an extension called PHP 10 strict rules. That well, it will, for example, analyze your your switch statement, and will go in like okay. The switch statement are receiving a float, but I have a string case, so they aren't match. So use stack analysis in our favor. I believe it's better than is best than use stack analysis. Sorry, use code standards because code standards. If your code standards ensure that your project is strict, your team needs to code strict. But well, sometimes it doesn't, and to Actually, just get an eco operator and convert to identical operator is really tricky because sometimes, yes, the variables can have the same type, but sometimes it doesn't. And just like I, I'm converting because I learned about the identical operator. Slow down, slow down. You need to check the types. For example, if you are convert, if you are comparing an integer to something, and then you realize that something is a float. Compare float, comparing floats in PHP using the identical operator isn't this the best way. There are some other ways, but please don't use the identical operator for compare floats, for example. Uh, so to finish my talk, uh, I like to talk about some strict things that I see coming for PHP score. The first one Hasmus actually talked yesterday is about type of properties in PHP. Uh, type of properties in PHP will be a game change for PHP, because for example, get, getters and setters will mostly die in PHP 7.4. But actually, we need more uh, strict changes for PHP score. For example, collections, arrays, basically type the arrays. Uh, we need a lot of stuff. We need to get rid of the eco operator, for example. But well, eco operator is the most basic thing in almost all languages and also PHP. Uh, for example, um, a couple of months ago, I discussed with Sara in Twitter about that behavior on switch. So, well, let's change the behavior of switch. Yes, let's change. Let's break some code out there. You can do that. So, it's really, it's really hard to make strict change to the core because uh, it's actually a fun fact. When you open an RFC, there's a message from Ziv and Hasmus. The first line is that please make sure 
the PHP continuous weak. Because PHP was designed to be weak. It isn't designed to be strong. So for those of you that ask for a strict change for the core, I have some bad news. It might not happen. It might never happen. But well, let's make some noise. Let's make let's email interns like saying, well, we need that. And perhaps they can accept, but until there, use strict programming paradigm in PHP to avoid some well, basically false positives. Okay? Uh, I have some reference that I use in this slide. I really recommend this article from Andrew, the creator of PHP Stun. My talk was almost based on that article. And uh, well, it was a pleasure to receive you today. As I said, it was a short talk. And I hope I, can te I could teach you a few more things about strict programming. And for the question session, if you have some like uh, example, we can add it in this slide. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Gabriel Cruz, and it was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. So, questions, comments, all that stuff? No! Oh my god. So, the next speaker has seven, eight minutes to get prepared. Thank you very much.